Lord, I, I thank you for this time that we have together this afternoon, Lord, as a church family. Lord, I pray that you'd be glorified in this time. Lord, I pray that you would give us unity together as we look both, both back at uh, 2019 and as we look ahead in this coming year. Lord, that you would give us the courage to walk in obedience to the plans that you have prepared for us to walk in, Lord. Uh, give us clarity of vision this morning, and give us just clarity along the way, each and every step, Lord. Um, we want to pursue you, and in Jesus' name, amen. So what you're about to hear this afternoon has been the elders and I, we took some time away to be able to pray through, to ask this very question, what is God inviting us to focus on in this coming year? Now, out of that, we came up with four things that we wanted to focus on. Now, I do what anybody, you know, does in this situation. I came home, told my wife, how was it? And it's like, we have these four things to focus on. And she's like, four? I'm not going to remember all that. That's too many. Like, that's crazy. Like, good for you. It, I need something I can grasp more. And so we really took that as an opportunity to say, okay, I thought four was simple, but let's bring it down to a word. If there was one word that was to describe this coming year, one word that we remembered that kind of encapsulated what we're desiring for this year as we're becoming disciples who make disciples, I just had to come back to the Sermon on the Mount, right? When, what, what you've heard me kind of say even recently and even coming out of in the fall of last year that Jesus called us the light of the world, that we were called to be a light. And he said, in the same way, let your light shine so that they see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And so that's why on the material that you see and on the screen and all this, we have this single word, shine, this is how we want to represent what we believe God is inviting us into in this coming year. I, I would encourage you that, that there's a magnet here for you to put on your fridge. There's a little token that I keep on my keychain. You'll see there that there's pictures that some will uh, put it on their keychain. They'll use it as a bracelet, a necklace. My heart in prayer is that this would kind of be as a way for you to remember. And when you see this, it reminds you to, to simply pray, Lord, use my life for your glory. Use my life to reflect your glory to others through my actions, through my speech. This is what we're called to. My prayer is that this is just a way to help us remember together. And, and even out of this, as we look at these four goals that, that are even around this idea of shine, even our series, this is not just something you're going to hear today. The rest of the sermon series through the year, the things that we're focusing on are going to reinforce this idea that sometimes in churches we can focus on so many things we don't necessarily remember or focus on a few things well. And so this is what we want to focus on in this coming year. I pray that, that um, you enjoy these, that you use these as a reminder for some of the things that we're going to be talking about today, to simply pray, Lord, use my life for your glory. Let my life reflect who you are as you're going about your life. And so that's the one word. That's it, like the one. Like if you're like, I don't remember the four points. I don't know the four things. All I know is Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, my life is to shine for his glory. If that's all you remember, awesome. That's a win. Let's take that and run with that together. Now, as we're focusing on that, there's four different areas we want to live that out. How then are we going to shine? What does this mean? What are we going to focus on in this coming year? The first one is this. It's our identity in Jesus. This can be something that if you've grown up in the church, it's something where it can be like, okay, yeah, 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 my identity in Jesus. Here's what we mean by that. We want to be in something that the elders are praying for constantly and talking about is that the process of us being transformed about that relationship with Jesus would be real. That we don't settle for just going through the motions of doing church. 
right? Like, I don't know if you've ever come to the point, like, if you've ever asked yourself, am I just satisfied with what I know about Jesus right now? I'm just going to live my life, and what I know about him, it's good enough. Like, we're satisfied in Jesus, but have we fallen into a spiritual rut? Are we just going through the motions of going to church and community group, but we're no longer living this authentic relationship with the living God who's transforming us, who's involved in our life, who's changing us, who's glorious beyond... Here's the thing that, like, the thought I have. When we are in heaven, right, we're going to see Him perfectly, and we still will not exhaust of knowing the fullness of who God is. It will be for all eternity we'll continue to marvel. So here on earth, when we see imperfectly, are we just like, ah, that's enough? Or or do we hunger and long for more? I I pray that, that in this coming year, in our identity in Jesus, that we are pursuing together, individually, not just together, but is there an individual passion, desire, affection for God? And for some, that's going to be like, yes, I want to know more. You're just soaking things up like a sponge. And, and my prayer is in this coming year, you're growing and learning and being changed. Others are going to be thinking, no, that's not my re- reality. I want it, but it's not my present reality. My prayer in this coming year is that when we look back next January, in a year from now, your story will be, I didn't start the year with those affections. But by God's grace, I hungered more and more. And it's different now than it was. It's going to be different depending on where you're at. But our prayer constantly is we don't want to just do church as just the Sunday morning gathering. God is a living, holy God who's inviting us into a relationship to be changed by him as we pursue him together in community. Our prayer is that the way we shine, the way we reflect his glory is based on what we behold, right? If we're looking at ourselves, we're going to reflect ourselves to others. But if we're looking to Jesus, if our eyes are fixed on him, if our affections are growing for him, that is going to be what we reflect then to others, to the world. And so are we beholding the right thing? That is the only way then that that we will truly shine for his glory in our communities. And that's going to be something that for for us, the invitation for you, we're praying for you. I would encourage you, pray for your own heart, pray for me, pray for, for the leaders, pray for each other, that this is our reality. This is what we long for. This is what we want to pursue together. And and in light of that, some of the series that we're doing are very intentional on this idea, 2 Corinthians. The series is going to be entitled Light of the Gospel. We saw this even as I've been looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the the light of the gospel in the face of Christ. In light of the gospel in these relationships, you have this idea of light and darkness at play. In the fall, we're going to be doing the book of 1 John, Walking in the Light is going to be that series, that this idea, this theme is something we want to reinforce and just dig into deeper and deeper about, yes, we want to reflect the light of the glory of Christ. We want to walk in this light together in community with confession and humility before one another, that this is something we want to to continue to dig into in this coming year. The second goal for this year is developing our children's ministry. This is going to be a focused effort because we believe in our heart and our desire is for our children to follow Christ, that it is a legacy, right? It doesn't just end with us. We want to see our children growing, becoming followers of Christ. That's our heart. That's not necessarily their desire for their life right now. They just want to play and have fun, right? And so what we want to do is we want to be very intentional about how we're meeting our children, providing an environment that they enjoy, that they're excited to participate in, that is providing a sound biblical teaching for them, 
in this robust children's ministry. This is not, and I so appreciate in uh, so many of the conversations that we've been having, um, we want to be able to serve families as they come and visit. We want to help our children grow in the faith. We want to come alongside parents. How do we have spiritual conversations around the table? This is more than just a program on Sunday morning. This is about families are ultimately called to disciple their children. They are the primary source of discipleship. But how are we resourcing families? How are we equipping? How are we providing materials for this to happen? And, and we see this, and one thing you're going to be hearing from, from Jenny is that this is a whole church, from the whole church to the whole church. This isn't just for a small section or just asking for more volunteers or this. Those things, yes, are needed, but they're not the goal. This is an opportunity for us to come beside families and children to disciple those whom God has entrusted to us. So this is going to be an area of, of focus um, financially um, and, and resources and time to see this ministry grow and develop in this coming year. And something that I, I want to encourage you, would you continue to pray for, pray a, a, about, um, there are lots of different opportunities that you're going to hear about. It is not just being in a classroom. There are things that you can even do at home during the week that serve children's ministry without ever having to be in the classroom if that's not your thing. But the heart and goal is to develop the ministry so that we are faithfully discipling our children. That is, is the heart and goal behind it, that it does not end with us. I, I think about even in the, um, like in Matthew 28 go, that whole idea like as you're going, keep going. It was in Deuteronomy 6. The, the, the Shema statement of hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Like, doesn't that sound just like in my mind that first point of that our identity would be in Jesus, that we are being transformed, that, that this is from our whole heart, soul, might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk to them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign to your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on your doorpost of your house and on your gates. That, that there's this sense of, yes, in the Great Commission, as you go, make disciples. In the same way, I hear the same thing here. That as we're changed, as you're living your life with your children, pass on your faith to your children. Let it be before them at all times. This is what we want to encourage and equip families to be able to do well. The third point that we want to focus on in this coming year and you'll have heard this even in our questions for the partnership renewal, is a culture of connection. Um, there's this <clears throat> sense that how are we connected to one another? There's opportunities here of, of stories of God's faithfulness in your life that would be of immense encouragement to others. We saw a bit of this during our last service in December when we had a time of sharing. As we talk about being the church, I want you to hear testimonies from people as they're praying for family and friends, how God is opening the door for opportunity. Um, and, and that, what I realize, because I've heard this from my own kids, I can teach them things. And yet, by God's grace, Emmanuel, my son-in-law, God has used him in my kid's life. And they've said to me, when he said it, it meant something because you're the pastor, you have to. You know, but, but, but he's normal. Like, <laughs> he goes to work and he loves Jesus. And it meant something. It's just the reality. And I realize you have a voice and an opportunity that I don't have that, you'll hear it from me and you're like, but you're the pastor. 
You hear it from the person who's sitting next to you, and you're like, oh, maybe that is possible. Maybe I could do that. That's what I want. This culture of a connection that is an encouragement in your faith journey, it can't just be my voice. It needs to be from one another to one another. But that also means we're growing in relationship. That yes, there's this spiritual encouragement, that this spiritual connection, but I also want there to be a sense of you're known, your story's known, that, that you feel this sense of, of connection here. There's people you can call on in times of need. There's people that when you're, you want to rejoice, that you can celebrate with them. This should be a reality here. And so how do we grow in that? This is why we were asking many of the questions <clears throat> that we were asking in that, that sheet. It's also going to be, yes, you'll hear us say, like, community groups. This is a great way. If you are not in a community group, a as a reminder, like, our community groups are starting up officially next week as we start the new series. So if you're not in a community group, we want to help you get connected. This is a great place to, to meet people, to be known like, how are you going to get to know somebody if you're not seeing them except on Sunday morning? How are you growing of, like, not just learning more information? Our heart in community group is how do you apply what we're hearing? How do we live that out? Not just learning more information, not saying the smarter I become or the more I know, the more sanctified I am. But it's are we faithfully applying and living in obedience to what God has already revealed? How are we doing that together in community? That's the purpose of community groups. And so that is a way of getting connected. It is not the only way. And so we want there to be just a sense of connection as we gather. It is something we are praying for. I believe that this is going to be a work of the Holy Spirit. We can do what we can do of like, we want to provide opportunities. Yes, there's lunches, there's community groups, there's things that we want to be faithful in doing. But ultimately, a spirit of unity and of connectedness is going to be a work of the Holy Spirit among us. That is going to be the bond that unites us. And so I want to invite you to be praying for that. Don't just assume it. If it's not being felt, pray about that. Pray for it. And then let's take steps toward it. Let's grow together in how we pursue those opportunities. But I think it's going to be both through our obedience and through prayer that we'll see God continually draw our hearts to one another as a family and in this connectedness that I believe we're invited into as a church family. So the fourth and final point. You've heard me talk about all month, <laughs> right? It's be the church. This is something that, that we're not just doing. Here's a one-month series. It's January. We're done. Moving on to the next thing, right? This is something that we say every week. It's something we want to be every week, and it's something that we want to follow up on throughout the year of even in the sharing time. So once a month, what we're committed to and part of that spirit of connectedness is once a month, we want someone from the congregation up here sharing their testimony during the service of how God has used this process of praying, caring, sharing, and discipling. Even if it's a massive fail, I'm counting that as a victory. Even if you're like, I prayed for this opportunity, God gave the opportunity, and I fell on my face. Praise Jesus. We're going to celebrate that together, right? It's okay. If it's like whatever that looks like, I want us to celebrate. I want us to hear the stories from one another, that we're celebrating this together, that it would be an encouragement for you. But when we talk about being the church, I, I really meant that this is something that we want to focus in on of how are we being the church? How are we being the church individually and then collectively? That we're continuing to be on mission both as you're sent out and as we gather what it means for us here in the community with South Creek Middle School, that that continues, that, that we also, through the, the giving and through relationship, are partnering with um, a couple that is currently doing church planting in North Africa, that that partnership is going to continue, that we are partnering with Restore Brazil, which is an organization that's raising up um, Brazilian church planters 
to be sent out to do church planting throughout Brazil in places where there is not a church. We are continuing to partner with uh, Crosspoint Espanol that meets at the YMCA in downtown and uh, supporting Crosspoint Jupiter that is planning in Jupiter, Florida. And so this is like part of like as a mission, as a church, this is who we're supporting and partnering with. But then there's also that sense of individually. How are we on mission together as the church to be the church? My hope is that in these four things, like in the past, we, we tried to do and we talked about doing a monthly update, like a family update. I'm wanting to move that to a quarterly update. We're not going to be changing goals throughout the year. These are the four things we're focusing on for 2020. <clears throat> in the quarterly updates, I want that to both be how are we doing in these four things and a financial update of where we are as a church family, which I'm also going to go through kind of on an annual side here as well. But so you'll be hearing that uh, working with the finance team, working out some of those details so that there would be a quarterly like family update at the end of the service once a quarter. So just so kind of on expectations about that family update, not these are the things that we will be focusing on in the coming year. So I want to look through um, on the back side of that paper. That's the vision. <laughs> now the numbers. Where we've been. We wanted to kind of let you know this is where um, we've been as a church. Can I have one of those? It's easier... Uh, to see this than my notes. When you look at the 2019 report, it should also be hopefully uh, up on the screen. You'll see that last year was our first full year in this facility. And so there were some estimates as we've been working with the finance team of what we were anticipating would come in, the budgeted goal. We were well under that. You'll see of actual giving was uh, 276000 uh, we adjusted spending. The finance team is continually like looking in, and we're making adjustments along the way to where we spent 283000 This was uh, a difference, I want to say, of about 6500 or, or so of what was spent versus what was given. That uh, still leads us to a... Um, ending cash balance of 101000 at the end of 2019. So that was kind of the facts of, of where we've been as a church. What was expected, what was actually given, what was actually spent, and then it, uh, it was overspent by the 6500 and then we have an ending cash balance of 101000 With this in mind, when the finance team met and submitted kind of the proposal to the elders for the budget for 2020, we did reduce that budget goal by 24000 um, The purpose of that was to fall more in line. It is still above what we received last year. So like do keep that in mind when it comes to um, where we're at, what we're praying for, what we're hoping for moving forward. But now that we have some uh, historical data behind us, we want it to make sure that we are being fiscally responsible as we move forward and faithful with the money that God has entrusted to us that is ultimately His and for His glory. The budgeted spending of what we're expecting based on the current budget is 303000 uh, Some of you will have two different numbers for that spending because I'm not a great detail person and I forgot to change that number. So if you add up the bottom, it won't total. It's like maybe 300, 200 off on some. So if you're like, wait, something doesn't add up, that's my fault. This was a page that was cut in half. One half got updated correctly. The other side did not. That was my fault um, in doing that. But these bottom numbers are correct on all sheets. Um, this is kind of the breakdown. If you're like, well, where does the money go? If there's ever a question with any of the finances, please let us know. Our books are open. Um, we try to make this uh, easy to also understand, well, where is the money going? How is that being used of the money that is given? You'll see that, that the majority is 50% um, is for personnel. 
Uh, we have four people on staff. Myself, I'm full-time. Marielle Buckner is outside helping with the kids. Um, she is part-time. Anthony Negron is part-time. And then Jenny is um, part-time uh, on our staff team as well with children's ministry. So that is the, the staff team that is helping to, to lead and, and serve in this. The operations includes everything from facility to insurances to um, the various database and like all those various things that you need in place to, to make things work is how that's being utilized. Oh, sorry, that's just operations. Facility is separate there at 16%. That is for the school. That number has gone down uh, some because uh, the tinkers who work here, I don't know if they still are, have opened up their home for our student ministry. So super thankful for them in that. You'll see that our various uh, ministries and the programs there are in there and then missions um, as well has gone up 2% that we want to be a giving generous church. I can't stand up here and say, hey, let's be generous. Here's a budget. It's more than what we did last year, like asking for generosity if we ourselves are not being generous. Um, as a church. And so our heart and desire is that we are continually being generous as a church in how it's not just about us. This is how God is, is leading what he is doing as we've sent out people from our congregation serving overseas, as we partner with what God is doing globally, as we also serve faithfully locally. It is our heart um, in everything that we do and how we're utilizing and using all the resources for his glory. So in there, you hear us say every week that there's the three ways to give. I, I would encourage you that seeing where we're at, where we were at last year, would you prayerfully consider um, what you're currently giving, um, how God is leading? Um, is that an appropriate amount? Has there been changes in the family? Uh, for some who aren't giving, giving, I remember having a professor once who said, look, sometimes you're like 10%. I could never do 10%. And he told us as students, he goes, give 1%. And so you were looking at a whole bunch of college students who were like 1%. We started to calculate that in the little bit we made. And we're like, that's nothing. And it was like, and then you started kind of going up from there. And it was interesting, the mentality change that happened in our hearts. And so I would encourage you with the same thing. If you're not currently giving, what would it look like for you to do 1%? Like, start small. What does it look like to invest in beyond just our own lives into what God is doing through the church family, both here in Orlando and globally, that God's using it to make an impact? I'm excited for what God's doing. Um, and yet I... There's numbers as well, and so you see both sides. Here's vision, and, and here's that need, and we're trusting God for that and believe that he will lead and provide as he sees fit. And so I'm thankful for, uh, oh, yes, these uh, tokens. In case I didn't make that clear, I don't have my keys on me. That is, is meant for you to, you'll see that it does have for bracelet, necklace, um, it's meant to be this thing that you have on you. I put it on my keychain, but for it to be a reminder that that one word, if it's only one word you leave here with, it's shine. That whenever you see that magnet on your fridge or wherever you put it, that you're asking God, Lord, use my life for your glory. Let my life reflect your glory and shine so that people give glory to our Father who is in heaven. So I do want to kind of allow time. If there are questions, please feel free to approach me, the elders. We want to be completely transparent on any questions that there might be so that we move forward together with unity. Um, but again, I realize I don't want to assume that any of this is possible apart from prayer. And so I want to encourage you, if you will, to, as we close... And before I just close in prayer and we go our own ways, can we just take a few moments to pray around the table with those that you're sitting near to pray for, for our own hearts, for these goals, 
for, for the needs, for anything that God lays on your heart, let's begin and let the first step be one of prayer and dependence on God, that we don't just talk about it, let's actually do it together. So after uh, some time, I'll get back up here and close in prayer.